boys and girls, today I want to talk about audio interfaces for the first time on this channel. And why is that? Well, because I need one. I'm looking for a new audio interface because I need something when I'm on the road. I need a mobile rig. I need a fly rig. I want to be able to record drums anywhere. That means I need a portable USB interface that sounds great, has a lot of channels, a lot of mic pre's, and if it doesn't break the bank, you know, that's also very welcome. Today, I'm gonna check out an interface that looks quite promising. It is the Evo 16 from Audient. I'm gonna test it in conjunction with a brand new product from Audient, their eight channel mic pre-converter called SP8. They're releasing it Today, we're gonna to do a proper test today. I wanna to find out how that very affordable Evo 16 audio interface, both the mic pre and the converter sound compared to my high-end setup here at the studio. API mic pre SSL converters. We're gonna do a proper test. We're gonna record drums and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Here we go. All right, before we do the recording, let me give you an overview of the setup that I usually use for tracking drums here at the studio. And let me give you an overview of the audience stuff that we're gonna use today. So when I'm recording drums here, I'm very often using my API mic pre's and I'm always going into my SSL AlphaLink converters. And I'm using a now discontinued SSL MX4 PCI Express card as my audio interface running on Windows. That setup with eight channels of API mic pre's might cost you close to $10,000 a euro. So I would consider this a high-end setup. Of course, there's stuff that is even more expensive, but this is, yeah, this is a high-end setup and it sounds great. And I've been using it for a long time. So that is one contender, but on the other side, we've got the Audient Evo 16, which is a USB interface for Mac and PC. It has eight mic pre's inbuilt, but it also has 16 additional channels of ADAT in out, which means you can use just the Evo 16 and you have eight channels of mic pre's and converters. That, that means if I only have to record vocals or guitar somewhere, that is all I need quite portable, nice, but if you need more, you can connect any ADOT converters from any other company or from Audient and make your setup bigger. And in order to do that, Audient have released another product called the SP8 today, which is basically the front end of the Evo 16. So it has eight mic pre's again and eight converters in out and you can connect it to the ADAT in of the Evo 16, but you can also use it as a mic pre converter with any other interface that has an ADAT input. But the cool thing, and I really like that audience, I really like that, the cool thing about using the Evo 16 together with the SP8 is that you can use what audience calls smart gain. And that is such a handy, feature that they added, especially when you are recording on the road or live and you don't have a lot of time. You basically just push that smart gain button, select the channels you want to record on, or if you just hold it longer, it will select all the channels. Then you start playing, you just feed the Evo 16 with your maximum level and it will set all the level for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the green button, the smart gain button, then I'm gonna select the channels where I want the gain to be adjusted. In this case, one, two, six. Gonna press it again. And then I have, I don't know how long, 15 seconds or something to hit things, to feed the Evo 16 with my maximum output. So you're gonna see me hitting things hard. And then we should be fine. We should be ready to record. So here we go. Gonna press it now. Select channels. One, two, three, four, five, six, press it again, turns red, and here we go. All 
And it looks like all the gains have been adjusted. So let's just don't touch it and let's start recording. With two SP8 and one Evo 16, I would have a 24 channel interface, converters and mic pre's. And that is pretty kick-ass. It's still quite small and that stuff is affordable. Compared to the other setup, that's quite a difference. But you know, it doesn't help, it doesn't help if it doesn't sound great. So here's what we're gonna do. If you wanna compare mic pre's and converters, the differences are gonna be subtle, at least if you compare professional gear. That means I wanna make sure that all the other parameters stay the same. The only difference is mic pre's and converters. I wanna compare apples to apples. And the most important part here is that we record the exact same performance with both setups. So if you let a drummer play twice, the difference between the performance might already be bigger than the difference between the mic pre's and the converters. So that means we're recording the same performance with both setups. And how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm using some high-end passive mic splitters from ADT, Atelier der Tonkunst, great company, link below, check them out. And we're gonna split our six mic channels, kick, snare, stereo overhead, and two toms, to the two setups, into my studio setup here, but we're also gonna go into the MacBook of my assistant, Daniel, where we have the Audion Evo interface. So we are recording the exact same performance, which means it makes it a lot easier to compare how the two setups will sound. Let me walk you through the drum and microphone setup. We are only recording six channels. The reason being that we only have six mic splitters. And as I said, we want to record the exact same performance. So in this case, we are limited to six channels. We have two overhead microphones and these are Austrian Audio OC818s. You can see them here right above the main crashes and they're both in a cardioid position. Then we have some new microphones that I'm using for the first time. Again, from Austrian Audio, they're new swivel microphones. The cool thing about them is that you can move the head like this, which makes it extremely versatile for uh, recording drum shells. We've got the dynamic version on the toms. That one is called OD5. And we spontaneously decided to use the condenser version, this one, which is called OC7 on the snare. Then we have a microphone that you can't see right now. That one is from SE Electronics, is their V kick, kick drum microphone inside the kick drum. And we're using it in the, let's call it neutral setting. So in the classic setting. Two overheads, snare, tom, tom, kick. That's all we need for this comparison. Let's get started. All right, everybody, here are the results. So first of all, the whole smart gain thing works like a charm. Really, really cool. It just works. The only thing uh, I would like to see in the future, dear audience, uh, you know, the levels are very conservative and I usually like to drive things a little harder. I know you're doing this to avoid any possible clipping, but it would be cool to have like an optional setting somewhere where I can say, okay, instead of having everything at minus 12, I want to have it at minus six or a little louder. But yeah, technically it just works great. One thing that I noticed is, that was a mis mistake on my side, that um, you have to link 
the channels if you're recording stereo setups. So in this case with the overheads, the first time I did the smart gain thing, I had not linked the channels. That means the smart gain will individually uh, adjust the gain. But of course you don't want that. You want to have like want to have both the same game settings on both microphones. But once you have linked the channels and you can link channels one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, uh, this works great. All right, so now let's have a listen. And I can already tell you, uh, it sounds great. And yeah, you can save a lot of money. I guess you can save a lot of money. I have imported all the files from the Mac to my PC here. Up here in red, you see, let's call it the high-end setup, API, SSL, and down here in purple, you see the Audient tracks. And let's just have a quick listen. This is how the overhead sound. Snare. Tom one and Tom two. And finally the kick. All sounds pretty nice. There's a list below to all the microphones and all the gear used in this video, by the way, if you want to check it out. The new Austrian microphones, the SE electronic mic, all that kind of stuff. We have no processing on any of the tracks except for the kick drum, where I added like a little EQ here, where I had like a certain resonance from the shell at 400 hertz, but that's more like a technical correction. And everything else is just a raw signal. I have gain matched everything up to 0.1 dB. So that means we can switch between the two performances. So we start with the high-end setup. And if I go like this, you will hear the audience setup. Let's have a listen. Can you hear a difference? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. That's a freaking $9,000 difference between those two setups. And I've been listening to this for over 30 minutes and I can't really hear a difference. So I was, I was thinking that the audience sounds a little more hi-fi with a little like extended top and a little less aggressive in the upper mid range especially on the parts where I play the crash. But when I tried a blind test, I didn't survive the blind test. So that means probably not. And and, and still, like, like I actually preferred the audience <laughs> uh, with a little more top end, but it's it's incredible and it's like it's like wow uh, it's like there should have been a lot more difference that's how I feel let's just loop one snare and one kick hit and just switch between the closed mics so we start with this snare track API SSL and then we go here and then I'll go back and then I'll go here so down here is the audience. There is maybe something in the overtone structure that makes the audience sound a touch brighter or more open. Uh, let's listen to the kick. I mean, we're making music here, right? So if it's hard to find a difference in an A-B test where we listen to single microphones, 
I highly doubt that this will matter in a real world context. So what I can officially announce now is that these audio interfaces, the converters and the mic pre's sound great and they're more than good enough for me to use them when I go on the road and record there. And anybody can use them in the studio. They sound great, all right? So at least in this setup, they sound just as good as my high-end setup here in the studio. So this is one test. We're tr we were trying to make a clean drum recording here. We were not pushing the pre's, we were not pushing the converters, we were not clipping anything. There might be a difference once you start cranking the mic pre's. You know, people love to crank their Neve preamps or their other preamps. I usually don't do that, so I'm not interested. But if you want to use a preamp to, to overdrive it, I'm pretty sure a Neve will sound different than an Audient preamp, you know. And same thing might happen to converters if you really clip them. But we're not doing that here, so... You know, that was not the question. I did not test that. One other thing I will test in the future is how, is the noise level of the whole system. On paper, it looks incredibly good, so I'm not expecting any problems there. But, you know, you don't have any noise problems when recording drums like this, like, you know, loud metal drums. But if you record whatever, an acoustic guitar with a ribbon mic, you really need to push the mic pre and that's where you sometimes hear the differences. So that will be my next test, how good these preamps or converters perform on quieter sources. And then, of course, on the road, I will see how stable the whole system is. But today we were talking about the audio quality and this is impressive. I was not able to do a null test here because, you know, if I play everything together, it sounds slightly phasey. I tried to move both performances exactly at the same spot, but I guess because we are using different clocks, word clocks, like, like the audience clock for one recording and the SSL clock for the other recording, you know, there's a certain mismatch and that doesn't work. So we cannot do a null test here. I mean, you can try. Download the files, you can try. All right, guys, if you want to download those multitracks and just compare them for yourself in your DAW, you can do that. All you got to do is you got to subscribe to my email list below. Subscribe to my email list. And in the final confirmation mail, I think that's the second email you get, there's a link to my Discord server. And on my Discord server, there's all the free stuff you will find those multi-tracks, you will find different snare samples, kick samples, you will find IRs, and a lot of other cool stuff. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm I'm impressed. As much as I love my current setup, I'm, I'm impressed. This is good stuff. Um, that's all for today. Uh, check out the links below to all the gear, the audience stuff, the microphones, the mic pre's and everything we've used in this video. Check out the Audient um, Evo 16. Check out the brand new SPA that has been released today and uh, have fun with all those sexy tools. Uh, don't forget, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So, you know, the two of us stay connected. And um, that's all for today. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.